order to be able to like fully talk about it and actually have a discussion about it, I really needed to put this restriction and limitation onto the chair saying yeah. that it could only be for women. And also feel that this was a space for uh, them, so this is a space for the woman and the woman that sits on it and other women and no one can come in and take that from you. Because otherwise you would have the same issue where a man comes in and take the space that now is dedicated to a woman and her overcoming some fears. So in that way, if I haven't done it, the conversation wouldn't happen there. Yeah. I do generally feel like there's something lacking and there are still surroundings and the way that we maneuver and move, not yet are like super conscious about that we still need to discover and explore, overcome and renew in a way. Most of the things that we surround ourselves with have been designed by men. So it also caters to a male body and a male landscape in general, also mm. in public. So to be a female designer also wanting to look at how our world is designed not to accommodate us. I think it's super interesting. But design, I find it to be a really like great tool. We're so familiar with design because everything is designed. Mm. Uh, and especially chairs, we're so accustomed to certain ways of maneuvering this specific object and behaving around the object on the object. Yeah. So taking this and disturbing this very simple way of doing things is what also makes it click with people. It's easier somehow to understand the activism through design because when a design fucks up, mm -hmm. you really feel it. Yeah. The cosmetics started like when I did the Basic Instinct series because it was also part of the research of the whole layering aspect and masking up in public. In that way, instead of like using the makeup to layer the chairs, I used it to blend it into the material first so it kind of becomes part of the body of the chair itself and not as these additional layers. Now, branching out like to other projects, we airbrush the makeup on. So we kind of take it a bit away, like the, having it embodied into the material kind of stays with the lady chairs and now the makeup is also used to just have fun, you know, get a lot of colors and also use makeup in a way that you can be performative with it. You can be someone completely different and it can be nice that you can also transform to whomever you might desire through makeup. But at the same time, makeup is also used as an application that was kind of like forced that you have to look good. There's so many aspects of makeup that you could talk about where you have positive but also very negative. Yeah, expectations. Yeah, exactly. I started with functional art just right after I graduated and they have been amazing. Besides from like having like a good personal connection, mm -hmm. they also, as a gallery, like they trust you so they don't necessarily curate you. Mm -hmm. They just come with inputs and that is yeah. really amazing because sometimes you can also really have spaces where this doesn't really exist and it's more than a business relationship, it's also very personal. And uh, yeah. in order to have a work relation with this kind of work, the personal aspect is super important. Also that someone believes in the themes that you're talking about and have kind of the similar views, otherwise it's just going to be a money machine and mm. not so much a passion. Yeah. When you come out of school also, and also as a recent graduate, you have like this thing, if you don't do it now, everything will just like drop on the floor. And, exactly. And it's, it's a feeling that I think many people sit with that we need to honestly also talk about, but also mm -hmm. try to fight it a bit because mm -hmm. now you almost have to come out with collections, right, every year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. it's like pa, 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 it goes super fast. And that in itself, I think it's nice also for all of us. Think a bit about, reflect a bit on, mm. yet again, we're also extremely depending on selling. I started actually teaching right after I came out of the Design Academy. Mm. And for me, there's also something, the students are extremely clever. <laughs> Not only teaching, but also getting some kind of input and feedback from them is like really nourishing for my own praxis in a way. I constantly want to question what is design today? How is it being implemented into our world? And the best way to also talk about this is at an institution. I think what I try to do, at least like the days that I teach, is to use topics that I'm myself interested in when I teach mm -hmm. and also questions that I myself walk around with. We together as a collective body investigate certain topics and not think that we are here to solve everything on my own. Teaching gives you input, but also it gives me like uh, the highest amount of energy. <laughs> it's just the environment when you come into the school, everybody's happy. And if they're not happy, have a quick talk and then you're happy. More started in Eindhoven. And then they were like, let's do an exhibition. We need to do something for ourselves. And this was kind of that first exhibition in the micro lab that just like catapulted everything. And then they was just like, okay, let's get people in. People we know, people we don't know, people from 
different countries now, people from different years. With every exhibition, there are new people invited to join. So there's always this uh, renewal, mm -hmm. and somehow it always ends up fitting into the environment. It's just great to have an independent collective that is experimental. Like, this is the platform where we experiment. It's about the work, but it's also about giving the joy and collective spirit that we have as a group and give that to other people for them to also enjoy through the work and through the exhibitions that we set up. We're not fixed, you know, we're always quite open. It's like new ideas and people coming in because otherwise they also you get like kind of the same environment in some way exactly the if same people come into your shows yes yeah and also because it's like so diverse we are able to sometimes create like these worlds like these small bubbles that you enter where you have a variation of objects or videos whatever it might be yeah. like maybe in two minutes a performer will come by you know and these things can only happen if you have a diverse group of people yeah and you get the experience that you kind of like teleport into somewhere else